motion. The, the, the uh, slavery uh, comes up each time at this circus. And each time, uh, the countries that were first to abolish slavery get attacked by the countries which are currently practicing slavery. Um, slavery uh, was abolished in the British Isles in 1772 and across the empire in 1833. Uh, and at that time, it was fiercely opposed, the ab abolition of slavery, by Arab and West African traders who were doing a great deal in it. Uh, and uh, Britain, though, like America, has, uh, ha finds itself the target of people who would pin it on them even now. But, of course, it's also an inversion of language. If, if uh, the language that's used at Durban can be used, then words stop meaning anything. It's exactly as Daniel Patrick Moynihan said. There's no use eventually for an important and necessary word to use like racism if it's being used in the kind of context it gets used at, at the UN. We uh, have to uh, call this what it is. Uh, this is nothing to do with racism. It's nothing to do with anti-racism. It's nothing to do with uh, the ordinary language and debate of politics. Durban pr uh, provides now what it has always provided, which is an opportunity for perverted despots uh, to attack the free nations of the world and deflect opinion worldwide from their own actions. That's, that's it. Um, and if there's any doubt about that, you know, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, which has taken such a leading role in this august Durban institution. Uh, Durban won that Zimbabwean government called on Britain and the U.S. to, quote, apologize unreservedly for their crimes against humanity. In the last 20 years, just the last 20 years, uh, life expectancy uh, for the average male in Zimbabwe has fallen by a third, just in the last 20 decades, under Mugabe's rule, by a third. Uh, it, the current life expectancy uh, of somebody in Zimbabwe, ruled by Mugabe, is 39 years. It's grotesque. By any estimation, it's grotesque. The government which attacks my government, your government in America, has the worst case of hyperinflation in modern times. The currency, as you know, is utterly worthless. Uh, untold numbers of Zimbabweans have been murdered by the regime untold tens of thousands more have died from the famine that that regime has allowed to come about. And it's not for nothing that the Ugandan-born Archbishop of York, John Sentamu, has called Mugabe the worst kind of racist dictator. In 2003, at the state funeral of one of his cabinet ministers, Mugabe said, quote, I am still the Hitler of the time. This Hitler had only one objecti uh, objective, justice for his own people, sovereignty for his people, recognition of the independence of his people, and their right to their resources. He said, if that is Hitler, then let me be a Hitler tenfold, ten times. That is what we stand for. Um, and, of course, Ahmadinejad. Last night in this city, about 100 undergraduate and graduate students, along with professors, attended an invitation-only dinner and a question-and-answer session with the despot of Tehran. Uh, it was moderated by uh, an Iranian UN official. Um, students spoke to CNN afterwards and expressed excitement about the event. Uh, at the end, the guests were given hand-painted plates from Iran and books about theology. The mood, according to CNN, was jovial and positive. People who were there said and that some questions were asked about nuclear issues. Uh, it's good not to spoil a good dinner. Uh, some questions were asked about the economy and Israel, but the tone remained positive. Ahmadinejad even joked and laughed at times. And, of course, at the dinner, Ahmadinejad claimed that Iran is, quote, the only nation that can offer a new model for life to the world. L neither words nor actions clearly mean anything if somebody can get away with saying that. A regime which hangs homosexuals, beats and kills women, keeps 50% of its population in total permanent subservience, and 100% in a kind of modern slavery. For the, so the leader of that regime to come to New York and claim that he and leads a model for the world is preposterous. And it goes on, but we get used to it. Because the problem that Durban has led to is that we become used, bored almost, by this kind of language. He normalizes it. It's so tedious uh, to keep on having to bang on about it. Um, but, you know, 
This Durban thing is supported by human rights violator after human rights violator. And that's all they have in common, the supporters of Durban. All they have in common is an interest in perverting real human rights and leading their own people into slavery. Now, it's not surprising that this anti-Israeli and indeed entirely anti-Western uh, initiative um, should go in for di diversionary tactics. The Libyan representative in Geneva said the intention behind the 10th anniversary event uh, was to include drawing attention to the alleged escalation of Islamophobia. Uh, the Libyan representative cited the Danish cartoons and reverent pastor threatening to burn the Quran in Florida. You can bet at the end of their august deliberations that it will be on exactly that matter that these luminaries uh, have spent most of their time. Um, uh, if, if, if somebody says that six million Jews weren't killed or says they want to kill another six million Jews, it's a detail. And to point it out must be Islamophobic. But the real problem is some wacky Florida pastor who couldn't fit his congregation into it. Uh, he could fit his congregation around a dining room table until he was made a, 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 some kind of world celebrity. And this uh, crazy pastor is, in the eyes of the attendees to Durban, the sort of thing you should really start to worry about. It's preposterous. Of course it is. But Ahmadinejad said a few minutes ago at the UN, that he, he thought the September 11th attacks were mysterious and they were a pretext for US-led war against Afghanistan and Iraq. He said the United States killed Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden instead of assigning a fact-finding team to investigate hidden elements involved in September the 11th. When Ahmadinejad speaks, when he denies the Holocaust, when he calls for the new one, as I say, it's so boring, it's become normal, and people stop going on about it. I've got his speech here. Somebody gave it to me earlier, not one of his representatives. And it's very striking, by the way, even the, the opening of his speech, in the name of God, compassionate, merciful, and so on, and it includes, oh God, hasten the arrival of Imam al-Mahdi and grant him good health, and so on. The, the usual throat clearing. Uh, 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 um, <laughs> Um, but, but, again, look out tomorrow for which papers or which broadcasters mention, even mention, that the dictator in Tehran started his speech with a prayer calling for the end of times. Because I'd bet that if George W. Bush had started a speech at the UN with a call for Armageddon, or a prayer for Armageddon, the Guardian newspaper would take an interest. It might, it might even make the front page of the New York Times. But, but, if, but if an Islamist fascist like Ahmadinejad does it, so boring, hardly worth a news in brief, don't you know? Uh, Durban, the Durban process is a joke. It comes from an institution, the UN, that has become a joke by continuing to support and sponsor and propel this appalling uh, idea. No organization can be serious if it has Iran on its commission on the status of women, has Saudi Arabia, China, and Cuba on its Human Rights Council, has China on its Committee on Information, has Sudan on the executive board of the Children's Fund and has Iran on the UN Commission on Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice. It's a joke, but it's a bad joke and a very serious joke. What is happening in this city at the moment matters because it is stripping people in countries around the world who need to use the terminology of human rights and need to use the terminology of racism, it is stripping that right from them, along with so much more. It perverts history, it perverts language, it perverts politics. I hope that uh, after today, uh, the Durban process can be declared dead. A failed process, it lies in the dust, it has passed on to meet its totalitarian makers, it is no more, and if anyone outside this room has any doubts about it, then the fact is they never looked into it in the first place. Thank you. Yeah.